Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nairi Woods, and I'm Dean of the Blavatnik School of Government, and it's an absolute pleasure to welcome you all here today. It's, it's not every day that we have a leader who is so universally admired for humility and leadership and empathy and all the qualities that here in the Blavatnik School of Government we're trying to inculcate in everyone that passes through our doorways and trying to emulate ourselves. I'm going to leave the formal introductions to the wonderful group that we have here and invite Silvana Amaya, who is one of the Master of Public Policy students just completing this year, to introduce our speakers and our moderator this evening. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, everybody, and welcome to the Vlavatnik School of Government. This is a very unique opportunity to have this amazing speaker. And I will apologize with everybody because, because I'm going to change the language now to do the introduction in Spanish. So please uh, use your headphones because I want to be polite with our amazing guest and do it in Spanish. Um, mi nombre es Silvana Maya. My name is Silvana Maya. I'm a student in this School of Government. This is a great opportunity to have this incredible former president of Uruguay with us, Pepe Mujica. I would like to thank those that made this event possible. It's an event organized by students from the Blavatnik School of Government and the Latin American Society and the Uruguayan Society. Pepe Mujica was a president between 2010 and 2015, and he has been an amazing leader for Latin America. America. It's difficult to define him and describe him. After spending half a day with him, I cannot find words that are adequate, but I think the word would be coherence. He's a person whose ideas and principles and way of life are coherent. For me, it has been a special pleasure because the idea that we have is to bring the region of Latin America to the school here at Oxford and to students of Oxford and other students in England so that they can have the privilege of listening to a true leader. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, I'm too excited, so I forgot to introduce Diego. He's the director of the Latin American Studies Center, and he will be the moderator of this event. Thank you. No need to apologize. I wouldn't present myself if I could, uh, given who is in the room. Um, let me just say before I start that it's, um, it's great um, for me to have the, the opportunity to be here. Nairi should be the one. She does this job much better than I do, but they let me um, because it was the opportunity to share um, a, a table with someone that we, um, those of us that work on Latin America, admire. Let me say that uh, a couple other things. Thank you especially to the students, and, and I will shift to Spanish in a second, but uh, the amaz there's many things that will be amazing about today, including the leader we have, but one of the amazing things is that, um, in truth, neither the Blavagnik nor us, the Latin American Center, had a lot to do. I mean, we had to sign a letter, we had to put a little bit of money, but at the end, this is all thanks to the students, and I think it's what makes Oxford so unique, so amazing, is that students in the middle of exams, in the middle of uh, many other things, decide to actually um, do something like this. And, and I think you can congratulate and clap as much um, the guests as, as you for the initiative, and I, I would like to thank um, the students for that. Um, I will now change into Spanish what makes the presence of Pepe Mujica so incredible here today. It's not only that he's such a great leader that has transformed Latin America, it's the fact, it's not the fact that Uruguay is such an amazing country. It's because he is one of the political leaders that impresses us because of who he is, and there aren't many leaders like that in the history of the 20th century, regardless of what they have done, not many of them inspire us, and he does. And in a time where it's difficult to find inspiring leaders, it is a pleasure to have him here and to have him in Oxford. So I will stop speaking and give the floor to the main speaker. Thank you very much. 
Muchas gracias. Thank you. Mi agradecimiento a quienes hicieron posible to those who made esta invitación it possible estar aquí. for me to be here. No tengo más remedio que hablar en la lengua de I Cervantes. I have no other choice than to speak in Cervantes language. Por el suburbio del río de la Plata. But transformed into the slang of the river Plate. Del sur, no puedo evitarlo. I come from the south, I cannot avoid that. Y miro that. el mundo desde el sur. And I look at the world from the south. Así que perdónenme si ofendo. So I am sorry if this offends you. Eh, mi agradecimiento a los muchos compatriotas que like hay aquí. I would like to thank all the countrymen that I find here. For me, Latina. everyone from Latin America is a countryman. Y finalmente, and finally, yo no sabía que venía una escuela de gobierno. I didn't know that I was coming to a school of government. Qué gobierno bárbaro van a salir con este edificio. You will have amazing governments with this Qué responsabilidad building. asumen ustedes. It is a great responsibility that you're assuming. Mi experiencia de gobierno My experience in government me permite recordarle. Allows me to remind you. Las cosas no son tan difíciles. Things are not that Aunque difficult. Tienen complicaciones. Although they might have some complications. Lo verdaderamente complicado son But what los is cosas. really complicated? Los hombres. Is people. Y las mujeres. Human beings, men, no los women. Hechos. Not facts. Eh, de una monarquía lo más peligroso es la corte. The most dangerous thing from a monarchy is the court. No sé si pueden entender. I don't know if you understand what I mean. Y bien, voy a comenzar por el final. So I will start por lo que han dicho ustedes. by the end, by what you have said. No considero. I do not believe. Que la política sea una profesión. That politics is a profession. La política es una pasión. Politics is passion. Un compromiso It's creador. a commitment, a creative commitment. A quienes les guste mucho la plata, Those who like money, mejor correrlos de la stay política. Away from politics. Que vayan a la industria, al go comercio, to industry, al trabajo. Go to trade, go to work. Y esta confusión, This confusion hay que tenerla claro de cuajo. Needs to be clarified no from the beginning. Política, Don't go into si politics if you are interested in making money. No decir que no haya This does not mean that politics does not involve interest. interest. There are interests. No But no interest, interest in things that cannot be bought or sold. The sense of honor. Si te dan responsabilidad de if you are given responsibilities, if you are chosen, tú, then you should be the one paying no que te paguen, and not being paid. Es un honor, because it is an honor. Y eso no tiene precio. And honors do not have y digo a esto price. Con claridad, and I say this clearly porque contemporáneamente se ha bastardeado. Because in contemporary times, the sense of politics has been um, damaged. And I come here to defend it, to defend the need for politics seen from a higher place. I am a Republican. Las repúblicas inventaron en el mundo para darle un portazo al feudalismo. To shut the a door las de sangre, of feudalism, of di blood differences, of categories from birth between human beings. Las republics para decir que nadie es más que nadie. were created or came about to ser say that no one no is more than anyone. Estrictamente iguales, being específicamente. similar, being equal, does not mean that we are the same semejante. specifically. But it means being equal. Unfortunately, se nos cuelan adentro de la república elements cuestiones cuasi nobiliarias from nobility educación de masa casi dependiente republics 
y creemos que un presidente es algo parecido a un rey is something similar to a king y que los ministros son algo parecido a marqueses o algo por el estilo y alfombra roja y gente que like toca that. la corneta y, y una nube de autos y una cantidad de gente que se gana la vida sin hacer nada durando eh, si la república son el gobierno de la mayoría If the republic is the government of majorities, los republicanos que gobiernan republicans governing tendrían que tener claro que hay que vivir con los valores de la mayoría that they have y to no live de with la the minoría of the minority, of the majority, creo que está hipotecada en la medida la política porque la imagen que se le ofrece a la gente partly because the image that we offer to the people is an image that is more similar to the privileged sectors of the economies of our societies, and they are not the majority. El parecer, del punto de vista contable, From an para la economía de un país tal vez es insignificante, pero para el alma de la masa me parece que es masses, It is determinant. That's where you lose trust. La otra cosa, humilde, Another humble thing la de vivir that I would like como to mention piensa. is the need to live how you think. Insisto. I insist de vivir the como need se piensa. to live according to what you think. Si no el de atar Because tu if vida you don't have piensa, the courage to live your life according to what you think, you will end up thinking according to how you live. Y esto And this una de requires a strong will. Eh, la política impone la necesidad de construir seres Politics colectivos. Impose the need to build collective Nuestra fuerza humana, our human como individuos, son una hoja del viento. We're a leaf in the wind. Las luchas, las mejoras, los escalones, los progresos de una sociedad, los pasos que damos en el hombre, en una sociedad, sí. dependen de los hombres. Podemos estar conformes en con filosofar en un café. Can talk about philosophy in a cafe, but in order to build paths for a society, imposes paying the price of building collective wills. And this forces us to commit our lives and forces us to understand that when we talk about many people, we need to be tolerant de carácter mayúsculo, With capital letters. porque los seres humanos, Because human beings, la naturaleza es maravillosa, nos hace nature semejante, is amazing. pero no idéntico. It makes us equal, but not y identical. tenemos conflictos diferentes, y los tendremos conflicts siempre. And and Lo que quiere decir que construir seres colectivos This significa means that una enorme building voluntad de negociación collective beings requires y de will and negotiation y si no se and tienen reaching seres middle ground. And if we don't have collective beings, no hay incidencia. we cannot make an influence. No de la realidad. We cannot make an impact on changing reality. Una cosa es ser filósofo para One escribir libros. One thing is libro. to be a philosopher to y write books. And a different la concreta thing de la historia. is fighting specifically eh, sin la construcción de history. seres colectivos. Without building collective habrá buen beings, pensamiento, pero difícil que we might la have realidad. thoughts, but we cannot change reality. Prefiero la vida liviano de equipaje. I prefer a life with Elijo la light vida luggage. De equipaje. I choose to live like this. Es la lucha por la libertad. It is the struggle, the fight for liberty. ¿Qué quiero decir? What do I mean? Si me acostumbro a vivir con lo If I get used to live sobriedad, with the minimum, with tengo el only the necessary, with sobriety. I have a larger margin in my life to dedicate to the things that motivate me, si that move me in life. If I fill myself with 
obligations of a material character, of a material nature. I have to spend a lot of time and energy in being careful that I'm not being robbed and, and working on this and working on that. And I was a guerrilla fighter and I learned this law. You can lack a lot of things, but if you start putting weight on your pack, you will lack the main thing. You cannot run away, you cannot escape. And life is a long guerrilla. In other words, we have to define grandiloquent the concept of liberty, of freedom. It's not a grandiloquent word of the French Revolution. For each individual, freedom means the margin of time when I'm alive and I can do whatever motivates me. If I have to work a lot, because I have lots of expenses, and I multiply them, I might be a hard worker, but I'm not a free man. And I'm not trying to say that you shouldn't work, that we shouldn't work. I'm trying to say that we should have free time to live. And by living, I mean having time to do the things that we like. John might like one thing, Peter might like another thing. From all values, the most important one, the one that we constantly forget, is being alive, life, the miracle of being alive, the adventure of being alive. And we all know that life has a fixed term, that we are doomed. And we go through life shooting at death. And since everything alive is organized towards living, and nothing is worth more than this, you are while you live. And when you stop living, you no longer are. And this is greatly important, because whether we realize it or not, human beings who have a memory, we build civilizations, we have a conscience, in the end, we do not really know where we come from, and where we are going. And we have invented lots of things. To bear, to make it through, among other things, religions, gods. We need the promise of gods, a promise of a world beyond, because our huge love for life, that is deep in our nature, makes us do this. And maybe some man who will die, who was going to die and who had a lot of money, had the idea of doing this building because it's a way of living after death. And someone else who doesn't have money but can write novels, maybe doesn't realize it, but does it to keep on living after death. There are small details, small things. Before death, these are small things. It's nothing. But it's a shout of this poor creature in the framework of nature. And if being alive is a miracle, we cannot promulgate with the idea that this is a valley of tears no. towards a paradise. No. No.
we can no longer say that. Yo lo digo entre tristeza and I say alegría. this a bit sad and a bit happy. We have to fight for happiness. Y nos han la and we have la been reduced to a competition. Life is a competition in the markets. Muela, o te las yo. Or you kill me or I kill you. Se le puede Can we call that competitiveness? Pero la vida se nos va. But life goes by. Eh. Entonces, so, me parece que no es lado, sino en el tropel de la composición de nuestra humanidad. In the constitution of our humanity, we have to start thinking about the concept of happiness and not reduce it to the concept of pleasure. That's a sensitive thing, the fact that the concept of happiness is involves a deep and fragile balance of things that haven't been discovered that we carry within us and that allow us to walk through life with happiness and fall down and get up again one time, a thousand times and give thanks to the nature for the adventure of being alive. The concept of happiness is precisely something similar to what birds do when the sun comes out. They sing. They're joyful in front of life. Even though there are falls and pains, we must be grateful for the adventure of being alive. And this means looking for balance within us to find the strength needed to live. Why do I say this, my friends? I won't come here to give you a lesson in, econo in economics. First, because I cannot do that. And secondly, because I disagree with the evolution of knowledge Economics until now was a bit combined with philosophy and ethics and then it started getting divorced from these disciplines and it became related to politics and now it's no longer economic politics, it's just economy. So with a set of recipes we find all the explanations and the methods and I find different realities. I go to Japan, I speak with people from Tokyo. Wow, an amazing city. They take the trash twice a week and they take it out already classified. If I even... If, if it even occurred to me to say this in Uruguay, they would look at me in awe. Why? Because the simple reason that in Japan there are Japanese people and in Uruguay there are Uruguayan people. And that's the problem of economy. Something that works in one place will not necessarily work in a different place. That is why some people have uh, been offended by what I say. I say it's a quasi-science. Uh, it, it is not a proper science, but I am very respectful of it. It is a very good science in explaining disasters after they have already happened. So, I would like to point out why politics. Aristotle is right. Men, human beings, are political animals. Why? 
because they are pack no animals, they are sociable animals, they are not felines. No they cannot live in loneliness. De los we depend on others. We build with others civilization. Because civilizations are the greatest inheritance that our former human beings leave us. And it is the greatest wealth that we can leave to those coming after us. Civilization is building generosity among generations Ahora, throughout a time. De sería Do an de abstraction exercise. Solo. What would it be of Sin us zapato. if we were alone, without shoes, que without para jackets or winter clothes, Sin without Sin luz. lighters, without light, Sin without computers, Sin without heart doctors? ¿Qué sería de nosotros? What would we do? We would be fragile creatures facing a bear or any other animal. What made us superior? Solidarity among generations and teamwork. Civilization is the daughter of Help. Men multiplied its capacity for growth, for conquering, for civilization. I know that within us we carry a selfish gene. Each living thing will fight for its own life and will always do it. And it fights for the life of its family. Pero no podemos vivir but we solo. cannot live alone. Desde la partera, el que nos entierra, From the midwife to the person that buries us, we are the only animal that buries the dead. And we need uh, an expert to bury a dead person. Yo tengo muchos compañeros. Los quiero en pila. I have many brothers Pero and si sisters, cardíaco, but if I have a heart attack, I need a heart expert, a heart doctor. ¿verdad? A cardiologist, and that happens in many other situations in life. We depend on others. Without society, we are nothing, absolutely nothing. It is not true that we only have the individual and the family. No, the individual and the family cannot respond without the weight of the civilization of society and what society stands for. This is why we need politics. And we need politics precisely because if each one of us is a perspective, is a difference, someone has to manage conflicts produced by these disagreements. Why do we have differences? Because we belong to different classes, because we are placed in different pyramids of production of distribution, because we have received different cultures, because genetically we're different, because the degree of intelligence is different between us, because of a number of reasons, because of religion, because of corporate influence, so many things, it's inevitable to have conflict. If we were perfect, we would not need politics, but we need to manage these differences. What for? So that the greater good can survive, and that greater good is society. The common good is the existence of society. Living is coexisting with other men and women, with other interests. And this is the role, the domestic role of politics to set limits within the framework of our differences, sometimes doing it right, sometimes doing it wrong. And in the highest peaks of human history, la politica, politics, se en las de de los pueblos, when it goes into the deepest parts of the changes in 
peoples is the one that sets the limits, the one that says we're not taking any more pain. It's the one that says we will no longer take any more abuses. This is it. Those are peak moments in the history of human beings that are expressed by politics in some way that allow us uh, for qualitative acts. And that sometimes also result in steps back because human history is not a straight line. These things that I'm saying, you might disagree with them, but they are a way of looking at human reality and the construction of our societies. But this is why I think that naturally, Each one of us needs to know, needs to realize that being born is a miracle. You had 40 million chances against you, against you being born. But you were born. Wow, that is a miracle. And if this is how it is, it's not a human virtue. Leches is also are born. Insects, other mammals are also born. No. But the difference is that we are aware of it. We have conscience. And at, up to some point, we can influence the path our lives may take. So you can have a life because you were born and because you can take it. If your life is transformed and is taken from you, then you're a good animal of work and of consumption. And the more you work, the more you can pay and the more you can consume. Until you're gone. And then another will come and will take your place. And so on. For centuries and centuries. But but if you are aware, you can give your life a direction. You can give your existence a meaning. Not like the person who made this building just because he had a lot of money. You can help to mitigate the pain of having to go and work to increase the value of human civilization. Transform your love into a gesture of value for those who are to come after you. That is to fight for the construction of civilizations, fighting to improve the world we live in, fight to have a path you will never reach the end of your path because the capacity to dream is bigger than the capacity of what you can actually do. But the prize is not in the end of the path. The prize is the path itself. If your life was the same as the life of a lettuce, then it would be like this. Your life has a different dignity. And this depends on the options that we make in life. On the choices that we make. And this is a challenge 
for us. Esto no se da por generación espontánea. This is not spontaneous. Esto se da por un juego de la libertad, supone libre elección. This is freedom, it's free choice of your path. Eh, ¿Por qué les digo esto? Why am I telling you this? Porque cuando era joven estaba desconforme con el sistema. When I was young, I was not happy with the system. Y era de los que soñaba que había And I was a dreamer. I dreamt about changing it. La propiedad y la distribución. Changing property and distribution, means of production and means of distribution. When I became, as I became older, I had, I had to learn other things. One of them is that if culture does not change, nothing changes. Y que es más fácil cambiar una realidad material and that it que una is easier cultural. to change a material reality than a cultural reality. Que el hombre, en parte, and that human beings de su can partly build and create their own culture. Why? De la con Here we have the history of civilizations. Parte. Partly, civilization helps to frame our instincts and moderate them and regulate them and express them in different ways. Otherwise, we have things that we cannot accept or we cannot imagine. How can we accept that old Eskimos die in the cold to avoid being a burden to others. How can we understand this? How can we understand that a man will throw himself into a house in fire to save someone that is inside? Because men don't think when they do this, they just do it. Because inside of us there is a sense of solidarity with others. La cultura puede. Culture. Pero ¿qué nos pasa? Takes us to do this, but what's going on with us? Social classes have a history, and there is a history in their behavior. Y las ideas que generan un sistema de producción. Ideas that generate a production system and a distribution system. Terminan conformando el horizonte también. End up making up the horizon of a culture. Es más claro. In other words, salir de las generalidades. We need to get out of generalities. Estamos tosigados con un bombardeo permanente de los medios audiovisuales. We are constantly bombarded by the media, by this, by that. Y pim pum pam. Y estamos inmersos en un partido de fútbol, de béisbol, de esto y de otro. Immersed in a soccer match, baseball match, and the resources of the entertainment society. Poor Rome, only with bread and circus. What we have to take is nothing besides what Romans had to take. You have to move around all of these things, and all of these things end up having an impact inside us that explains some of our reactions. But neither the media nor entertainment nor consumerism as a mass Son behavior are the work of the Holy Spirit. They are functional constructions for the accumulation policy that is necessary for our system. Our system has generated these cultural factors that are precisely favorable to the great function of accumulation. This country, historical example, Liverpool, the beautiful 
City of the Beatles. Pero resulta que en una época fue el mercado donde se remataban los But it was once the market where slaves were auctioned, slaves that were hunted in Africa and were taken to the colonies. Or am I wrong? Ah, oh, era así. that's how it was then. Sin embargo, 50 años después, However, 50 years later, colonia, when the colonies became more rebellious, and there were people in England that realized that this label was favoring the emerging power, they started to bring down the slave ships. It was a, an amazing functional change of the empire. So empires have also built cultures. Estas cosas creo que son funcionales. These things, I think, are functional. Lo que quiere decir, y aquí voy al cerno de la cuestión. What I mean by this, and this is the key of the question. I was rebelled against capitalism, but it's not capitalism's fault. Capitalism is the product, is the result of our civilization. The problem has a civilization nature. We are in a culture, there's a discussion between the left and the right, which to me is archaic, because it is not only about the system, it's about the civilization. This civilization is not so Western or so Christian. We have a God that is called market. And our life is not around the happiness of men and women. It goes around the interests of the market. I could give you figures, but you're better in figures than me. This has become more dramatic because social classes change their behavior because they are affected by history. For example, yesterday I was talking with some colleagues during feudalism in the ninth century. The masters were Bruto. militaries, they were savage, brute, Con un de with a strong sense of responsibility for their propio. servants, for their own interest, de capable of anything. Era la época de la armadura. Those were the times of armors. Little do these men have to do with men wearing wigs during the 16th century. This means with feudalism of other times. The bourgeoisie, when it appeared in this country and others, is Puritan, Quaker. They have a sense of work and saving and sobriety and investment. Hates feudalism for living on others, etc., etc. It's right. In our times today, financial capitalism has become a speculating element of amazing dimensions that has transformed our lives in Bets. And I am not talking about the production capitalism. I am talking about financial capitalism that has incredible figures that are condemning countries. For example, a country has reserves. As any other Latin American country, we say we have reserves. We say we have reserves. 
Tenemos un montón de plata que no we have a lot of money that we cannot use because we have to have it in case our currency is attacked because we have to buy dollars or sell dollars, otherwise we cannot no cope. But we cannot use our reserves in an investment in productive no, investment no. to generate jobs. No. We call it reserve because of historical matters, but it is actually a fund for betting because we are victims of that that has been caused by this capitalism and that needs fiscal heavens and all those things that you know about more than me. Why? Because in the north of, because the, the aim of this civilization is accumulation. This has resulted in corruption because if we need money fast, then we're doomed. And because accumulation is important, we have to offer, we have to buy people Todas and we have to take allá, everything and buy everything here and there to make decisions. And this is prostituting democracy and prostituting politics. La causa? La causa but what is the cause? The cause is this representation, this image, this idea that being successful in life is having money, lots of money. This is more important than anything else. It doesn't matter how we get there. And this becomes more serious with the differences that we find in the world. It's very likely that companies in a developed country won't do things in a developed country, but when they go to Africa, to Latin America, they do whatever they want. They want to win their place and they pay money here and they pay money there and they do whatever. Or am I lying? And what about the peoples, the nations that allow this? In Latin America, there are police in the streets that already have rates for the bribing that you need to pay to be let through. So society ends up being rotten. Not only the government, but the global behavior of a society, but you have to do what you believe in. I don't think that democracy should not be reduced to voting every four or five years. And the excessive accumulation of wealth ends up being a concentration of power, of political power, and an oligarch and this is not democracy, it's plutocracy. And we are exposed to this. This means that culture and civilization are more important than it seems. And I can talk about this here in a university. And I am concerned about talking about these things with university students because you will be the future proletariats of the world. The world needs people. The, ex the technological explosion imposes that the working masses of the future will need tertiary education. And the next revolution that is coming to us fast is the introduction of robots replacing human labor. That would be great for a free world. The problem is that robots will work for the owner of robots. That's the problem what could be a tool for liberation will depend 
on the capacity of relation and organization of people and on the capacity for struggle. No one will give us prosperity and progress. In order to build civilizations, we need to put part of our existence in these struggles for human progress. As many others fought before in the past, for example, for an eight-hour workday, as others fought against slavery, as others fought for republicanism, for the vote, for the equality between genders. Every step that we take in civilizations were carried out by minorities that fought during their no times until they reached their objectives. I don't think it was a work of the gods that were inspired and granted these gifts to men. This is why I think that a commitment to these kind of things has sense, and there will be a better humanity if universities start committing with this, because they have the responsibility of intelligence. Is it possible to build a better world? If it is possible to have a tractor walking, then it's possible to have a better world will be difficult, we will face lots of difficulties. But we cannot escape death. But we still fight to make our lives as long as possible. And to live, we need to have a reason for it. We need to have a reason for living. Not just live by an accident of a sperm that reached an egg. To have a cause is to look for it in the horizon of our conscience, of our minds, and in our collective pains as societies. What to say? about the fact that civilization is doing something for me today so I can do something for you tomorrow. It's not about uh, altruism. It's a higher good. This is why finally I would like to say to you something I believe in. There was an old movie that had a lot of success, Rebel Without a Cause. Precisely, the defect, the flaw, was that this rebel did not have a cause. But we cannot quit one cannot quit. Human beings were not born to quit. Human beings are a conquering animal. A strange monkey that was born maybe in Africa and started walking and in order to build families, teams, tribes, a clearly socialist animal, but not in the way that we understand socialism. No. No primitive hunting, hunter thought that a deer belonged to him or that the territory where he hunted belonged to him. They knew clearly that it belonged to everybody, and they knew that their 
duty was to hunt and share with children, with old people. That's why I say socialist. 90% of our existence in the planet, we live in more or less big families, in bands, in packs. What we are today is a construction of history. We were a socialist animal and the history made us capitalist with the appearance of merchandise. But inside of us we still have that old creature that is hidden inside of us as many other things. We have a genome that is almost the same and a memory, a biological memory. And then we have an ontologic behavior and then an explosion, a formidable explosion, more modern. We are a complicated animal. A grandfather, a great-grandfather that spent a lot of time next to the fire that was a hunter. And today, men have heating systems and they don't even use real wood. They have fake wood in their fires and they have pots in their apartments with plants. And they go to supermarkets with a cart and when they go to see a football match they shout and they yell because they need their tribe. We're all of this and more. We shouldn't talk deeply in politics if we don't spend a year or so studying human behavior. Never think that men and women are only reason, or that the main decisions in their lives are always taken reasonably. Oh, it would be so easy if it were like that. But if you analyze your life specifically, you will see that more than once you made decisions, important decisions, without taking reason into account. Why did you fall in love with that girl? Right? Well, this happens in many aspects of our life. We're so complex. Science of behavior has a lot to do with knowing certain key aspects of politics. When people Choose. They do it partly with their head, partly with their pocket, but very often with their heart. This is why I am a black sheep in this university and in the history of this university. I am anti-monarchy, I am a republican, Anti-colonialism. I have every flaw. But I admire culture. And age has taught me to have friends that think totally differently. And I respect them. And I feel a good friend because I have learned that to live together, we have to learn to respect our differences. And one of the worst contemporary diseases is extremism, is fanatism. One thing is passion, and a different thing is fanatism that ends up closing doors. Another thing that life has taught me is to drive hatred away. Hatred and love 
son parientes. Are rel Los dos relatives. Son ciegos. They're both blind. La diferencia que el amor the es difference creador, is that love is a creator no cosa, and hatred destroys. Y sobre todo, and above all, it destroys ourselves profesamos. when we feel it. Por eso, una clave que tiene la es This is why an important thing in politics que la is to learn that diversity exists and that tolerance is essential to learn to coexist in societies. Sin embargo, However, no es un bien logrado de una vez y para siempre. It's not something that we achieve once and for all. It's always being threatened. Más. And taking steps back. Hay un mundo supuestamente liberal. There is a world that is supposedly liberal. Yo no puedo discrepar con el ideal del liberalismo. I cannot disagree with the ideal of Mi liberalism. On the contrary, my disagreement is with the lie of liberalism, of offering the conditions of a marvelous world that cannot Pero be si realized. Mejor, But if no sepultando we can get a better world. It's not burying liberalism as a life philosophy, but multiplying it. It is a good from which we have to build and not go back, because that would mean losing civilization. And liberalism teaches from our politics Uh, from a political perspective, the value of diversity, of tolerance, of coexistence, and of not believing that we are the central of the world, uh, that we are the owners of the truth. However, this is constantly being challenged and threatened. And It is constantly being denied in the facts by the speakers, the own speakers of liberalism. Otherwise, the general behavior of the mass media in the world would not be understood. They are not liberal at all. Or maybe they are liberal but only towards one side and not the For other. Todas estas cosas, y que dejo en el tintero, For all these things and many others that I cannot go into, hagan algo, no se I'm telling you, do something, do not stand still. Se puede por los males. We can fight to mitigate evil. Y está bien. And it is right. Y se puede and we can fight por la necesidad de, de recrear otra civilización. For the need Dicho to create a different crónico. civilization. Dicho así, Said like this, it's chronic. Si hay gente If there are people en el seno de la inteligencia del mundo que se compromete, será in the world that commits to this, y si se it might be utopía, es un rumbo something utopic, para la humanidad del futuro. but it can be a way for the humanity of the future. We have reached a stage of human civilization, my dear friends, Latin American countrymen and women, that I don't know if we can find answers. I think there are problems that cannot be solved and will not be solved by any country. They cannot be solved because humanity is needing a global governance in, in some aspects. Y no sé si de And I don't especie. know if we were going to be able to think as a species. No sé si nos I los don't know del como global. if we can reach a global community of men. Algo que ya he dicho por ahí. 
I have already said this. For over 30 years, we have known that we're doing wrong to our environment. We know everything that we have to do. Science and academia have opened our eyes, but we're not doing it. Because there are economic interests that we cannot put a stop to. Well... We're destroying nature because of this civilization of consumerism and waste. It is not true that we do not have the means to face this problem. We have never had so much resources and technology and accumulation as we have today. It's horrible, it's horrendous to say that we do not have the means when two millions are spent per minute on military resources and, other, and on other things that I'm not even going to mention. Human beings are capable of bringing life to the Sahara. Human beings can positively change misfortunes that are being suffered by nature. We do have the means, we do have the knowledge. But we need to learn to govern ourselves. We need to start taking care of our species. We have financial globalization, but we do not have a global moral, a global ethics. The poor people in Africa are not poor people from Africa. Women that do not have water are not from Africa. They are ours. Those that are drowning in the Mediterranean Sea are ours. They are the price of colonial sins. They are the injuries from our own humanity. We have to fight to change this selfish civilization, this cruel civilization. Make numbers. Make your numbers of how much food we waste in the world. In this central world. Dogs in Europe eat much better than people in sub-Saharan Africa and the poor people in Latin America. So, this is an ethical problem about generating political will. There are some things that I cannot understand. I don't know if I was able to express them about the boundaries of human beings. Throughout the history of humanity, there have been many civilizations, but most of them were under the strength of military power. The Chinese Popular Republic is a globalized empire. There have been many. The spread of the Hellenic civilization with Alexander. Well. But we cannot talk about or think about military globalization of the world. We would need an agreement among the main powers, you are one of them. There is a responsibility of central countries that are the authors of these, the joint authors of this civilization and that are responsible partly for this civilization. Someone needs to take responsibility and it is not by closing doors that we do it. Someone needs to take responsibility. 
or am I wrong? And this will determine the future world. Or what kind of world will we have? Empires that are fighting for influence. The generation that comes in a few years in Latin America that compares yellow imperialism with the Yankee imperialism, which was better, which was more cruel. Or is the struggle for a global humanity with global values, with a common ethics, with certain minimum politics for all? Leighton said, if Einstein said, if you can change, if you want to change, you cannot keep on doing the same things. To keep on doing the same things is to be happy with what we have and think that democracy is voting every four or five years, and then get angry when electricity comes up and when fuel comes up. Another thing is to feel the responsibility and to fight for changes in this world. As central countries have a huge responsibility for what happens, because they are the ones that can really cut the cake if they are able to confront financial capital. If you are going to be, if you're going to allow to be dominated until now with this crisis of the subprime and speculation, and no one is going to jail and nothing is going on, and they go on putting money, then we are screwed. In this case, we are screwed, and you will be the responsible ones. Why? Because you will represent the intelligent sector of society. You have paid the price to be university students. And it is one thing for illiterate poor people to be amazed by nice words, but it is a different thing for you to fall for those words by the consumerism society. I don't know what the future will bring. And I might be wrong, terribly wrong. But I don't come here to say nice things to you. It is very hard to move my bones here. I come here to tell you about the world you have to live in, how difficult it is and to encourage you to find a sense for your existence. Thank you. another opportunity to clap so um, actually um, there's room for questions and comments so we will have the opportunity to clap even more uh, in a little bit so can I actually open um, the floor in either in Spanish or English uh, if you can identify who you are that would be great yes sí, claro. my name my name is Juan Manuel. I am come from Mexico. I am a student here at the university. I wanted to ask you 
de esta visión global you were talking about this global view especies, about no seeing ourselves as a species rather than as countries or tribes you are a descendant from Europeans that ran away from totalitarianism from poverty towards Latin America and we were received with open arms and now in the UK there is an anti immigration rhetoric they don't want people to come here so how would you see this rhetoric and this anti-immigrants trend and this anti-globalization trend of uh, the UK, Donald Trump in the United States. What's your opinion on this? Well, brother, I was referring to matters of human behavior. It is a very curious thing. In underdeveloped societies, in very poor societies, curiously, solidarity assets almost genetic and ancient of sharing are seen in the most miserable, most poor sectors. Women that share the little they have with their neighbors, with their sons and daughters. There are community links. We see this solidarity as a tool for survival. And when societies become better, when they find themselves in a better situation, it seems that individualism starts to become stronger. Why? I think we have a genetic capital that pushes us to be selfish on one hand. Humans are the wolves of humans. But this is a theoretical explanation that is reactionary and ends up transforming the state for the uh, as the responsible for human security. Then we have Robespierre's view. Humans are not corrupt, but they can be corrupted. And based on this, we have prevention, justice, and an authoritarian state. It seems that we're both things, that we're, we present a duality. We have on one hand selfishness and on the other hand generosity. And we have a fight inside ourselves. The role of culture is what we privilege if we express this selfishness or not. Curiously, capitalist societies in the contemporary world are showing a stronger individualism. Poor are to be blamed for their poverty. They must have done something wrong, maybe they didn't work, maybe they're lazy, whatever. And there are many barriers. In this case, white Europeans do not want to share. In the past, colored women were useful as servants, and they cleaned your houses, and they even had your child sometimes, and we did use them as much as we could. But now they are a burden. We don't want them anymore. We need to acknowledge that this is a step 
back in terms of civilization. It is painful. What is worse it is that it's not a matter of economic growth. It is not about economic growth. No, we are about culture as well. It is about civilization, and this is something that needs to be cultivated and worked on. Otherwise, we are screwed and selfishness will result in this. There is a number of nationalist parties in Europe that are denying human progress, and not only are they denying it, they are stabbing Europe. Because something is clear is Europe's demographic age. It is la social del va a ser un the, the, the future is facing a problem Porque because the population is aging. Es que el nivel When we improve de economic conditions, birth rates decrease. That's y another thing about human Europa behavior. And for some time now, Europe has global. had an interesting economic level. People have stopped having children. Children seem to be the blessing of the poor. In the behavior of poor women, having children is becoming a mother. Is it gives value to women even though they do not know it consciously, it is instinctively a defense. Some stupid people think it's just about uh, opening their legs. They don't understand that it's their self-esteem pushing them. They want to be someone in a chauvinistic world. Those that are more respected are mothers, but those are the pains of the poor world and the disgraces of the chauvinist nature of the poor world. The rich world is also chauvinistic, of course. I don't buy the story that there is no uh, gender discrimination in the rich world, but it is manifested in different forms. So, I summarize. I think this is the product of a social behavior, as, uh, well, as the one that I pointed out about Quakers and uh, feudal masters, this selfishness is being motivated by the belief that if we share, we are screwed. And there is also a contribution by the religious problem. Hi, I'm Lorena de la Puente, I'm from eh, Peru. I wanted to ask, you met with Verónica Mendoza, a former candidate for the Frente Amplio Party in Peru, and uh, we, the ones that want to bring about leftist movements in Peru, are finding it difficult because there is a tradition of right-wing governments, but she had a different discourse. She spoke about understanding politics as an act of love, and after 30 years, this discourse allowed for the left to have an important presence in Peruvian politics. So does this politics of love have something to do with the Latin America? America of today? Well, it depends on what you understand by love. Love is a complex creature. It's don't don't believe that love is just tenderness. Something that surprised me about Peru is a wall that separates poor neighborhoods from rich neighborhoods. It's an embarrassing thing. And I don't understand, isn't there anyone that can blow that wall up? At least blow some holes on it. But I think that what is called the Frente Amplio, 
And I think that um, this Frente Amplio party, Noah Keiko, took a picture of me. She, they didn't say who I had to vote, but they did recommend who I didn't have to vote. It's not in Peru, but the plague of the left in the world has been the lack of an ability to unite. Hitler won in Germany because the socialists and the communist parties in Germany confronted each other instead of joining forces. Franco died of age in a bed because anarchist, communist, socialist fought each other. They could not join forces and fight for a common cause. When people divide, they become weaker. The French Revolution went to hell and was defeated by Napoleon when Jacobians joined the right against the center. Well, if we don't learn from human history, I don't know from what we're going to learn. However, the human creature is the only one that can step on the can, can tumble the same stone more than once. So what you have achieved in Peru, take care of it, multiply it. In my country, we do not have a perfect machine. We have built a political formula that has 45 years already. Christian democracy, communist party, it was an amazing combo. We fight each other every day, but when we make a decision, that's it. We stand by it. And that made us strong. And if we hadn't achieved that, we would be having a chat in a pub. Is it perfect? No, it isn't. But division will doom you. Hello, thank you very much for your speech. I think that everything you have said is right. And when you were a minister, when you were a president, how could you bring your ideals to the daily political practice? with the decision-making, with the pressures that you were subject to, how could you bring your ideals to all of that? I thought about where I had been, about what I had fought for, and I think I learned this. As long as possible, we always have to try to favor the most general interest that involves a higher number of people. It is never the ideal decision, but we have to have a sense of justice in whatever we do. First, fight to bring something more to the weakest ones. Secondly, if society is organized in a certain way, do not kill the hen of the golden eggs. Let's have the hen... We have, have to have her keep on putting some eggs, laying eggs. And to lay eggs, she has to eat. But we need the eggs, because then we can share and distribute the wealth. But this is a constant struggle. The hen will never be happy with what she's being fed. She will always want to eat more. 
And that's when you're screwed. ¿Qué te decir? Because eggs will be very expensive for you. El What am I saying? The appetite of a proprietary social class will Tienes never be satisfied. You need to let these classes Pero eat. No tanto. But not too much. Pero no tanto. But not too much. Si lo, con, lo querés condenar al hambre, If no you want to doom them to starvation, they won't take starvation and they will just run away. And then you will be left with nothing and you will have nothing to distribute. And then those you want it to favor will be unhappy as well. And the other one will be unhappy as well because they will think that you're taking too much from them. And that is the arts of politics. Never ask what you cannot be given. And to not take drastic measures when you do not have the capacity to stand by it. And this brings you backwards. That was a lesson that I learned many years ago in revolutionary Cuba. The revolution had been going on for a year, two years, and they nationalized a fertilizer, a new fertilizer manufacturer plant. And the owners were American and they, they ran away. And there was a 24-year-old lawyer managing it and he didn't even know where he was standing. So the um, plant Uh, decreased its production and just went to hell. No. Why? Te no, no, no. Don't nationalize and confiscate if you're going to end Porque up with no less, progreso. because that is not progress. Let them keep on eating, and if one day you have solvency and capacity to produce more, then you can take your bite, but not before, because otherwise you are just multiplying your problems. And this is part of the arts of politics, and you have to constantly negotiate, and you have costs, political costs, It is about understanding that governing is about making decisions that will favor some and will be bad for others. It, decisions are never neutral. Politics are not a science. Politics cannot resign to sciences, but they have things that are more related to an art, because all the factors that are being managed cannot be measured. And as Churchill said, you have to swallow some toads every once in a while. I would like to thank you for the support to Brazilians that are suffering a mediatic coup d'etat. And Mujica went there and supported people to continue fighting. And we are going on with this battle that is becoming very difficult. So on another topic, I would like to know more about your opinion about this new movement in Cuba, uh, this new connection with the American government, with the United States government. Uh, some people think that capitalism will start uh, predominating in Cuba, so I would like to know your opinion about that. Mira. Tal vez. Lo más lo más central. The most important thing. Yo no creo que a la gente se le pueda pedir. 
I don't think that people can be asked chronically to make a sacrifice for decades and decades. Because just telling them that someday we will have a better world. And I think that we have to build. There are moments where sacrifice is inevitable. But we always have to long for people to live their lives as good as possible. And this is related to what I said about the love for life and about the beauty of life. So I think that Cuba has to live this adventure trying to improve the material income of many basic things that their people need and that we cannot ask the Cuban people to sacrifice themselves indefinitely. It's not right. We cannot do that. So, is there a risk? Yes, of course there is a risk. And they probably took that risk into consideration. I think they are making a bet. They are taking a risk. They might be right or wrong. The degree of awareness and of culture of the Cuban people is the highest in Latin America. And Cuba has a lot of flaws. The worst flaw is their mistake they made with agriculture. As peasants, as producers, they made a big mistake. And that made things more difficult to them. But they do have a beautiful thing. They have fostered culture and knowledge. They have many physicians around the world who send their money back to Cuba. And that is amazing in the society that we live in because any of those physicians could just go anywhere and live from capitalism and they are sending their money back home. Why? Because they have a conscience and awareness. Uh, they have love for their family, for their people. So I think the bet they made is related to this. They believe that they might move economy and that the influence, the deformations brought by, a, by this increases can be uh, bearable, can be manageable. They might be wrong, as anyone. It is sort of an experimental thing. Now, the situation of blockage it was actually a big lie. One day I was in a house in Cuba and there were these amazing big grapes and I asked myself, where did you get these grapes? And I knew that those grapes could not come from Cuba. I know my agriculture, so... No, this comes from from United States, but how, how come? Isn't there a blockage? And I was talking with the Minister of Economics in Cuba, and he was showing me that United States was selling the ton of chicken at $500. So with that price, they do not even pay the feed for the chicken. And why are they doing it? Because in United States, they love eating chicken breast, and so they're selling them chicken legs. But they like chicken breast. And they have leftover legs. So just imagine 300 million people eating chicken breast. Well, they have lots of leftover legs. And we like legs in Latin America. And so they sell the ton of chicken leg at $500, which is very, very cheap. 
but they do not sell them medication, Why do they sell chicken? Because they don't know what to do with those legs. Bueno. Well, Yo creo que había I que think esa that they had to take this opportunity. And I did what I could, trying to give advice, and I think it's a rational choice. And we have to lower the tensions. Pero and Pero me que el I no think, think that the Cuban people has an intellectual richness and an awareness that is important. I don't have a crystal ball to tell you what's going to happen. I am happy to live far away from the United States, so their influence is very little in our country. We have more serious problems than the United States. But I know that there are intellectuals from the left that are not happy with the step taken by Cuba. I understand them. But I do not agree because I have seen the Cuban people. Taking stones from rice. They were living from the rice that Vietnam was giving them. And they have lived through sacrifices that are not right. And I think that it is a human thing to do to find a better situation for them in basic things that they need. In the end, we might have thought at once that the revolution was paradise, an arc of triumph, and that all problems were solved after that. And that was a utopic idea. We will always have problems. The only thing we have is a long way before us towards human progress. Revolutions are not the solution for any problem in humanity. They are necessary leaps when a people say that they cannot take something anymore. But let us not ask revolutions what they cannot give us. So, I have always defended the Cuban Revolution with some disagreements. I am not a supporter of the dictatorship of the proletariat. Although when I was young, I did agree with this. But then I saw that the dictatorship of the proletariat was just the dictatorship. So what was that? No. Wait a minute. I think democracy has a lot of flaws. The worst one is plutocracy. But that does not mean that we shouldn't fight for it. We have to fight to improve it. Since politics is not a profession, it is a passion. I think we have learned a lot, but we have learned something that we should have learned from the beginning and not in the end of the course. I wanted to thank the interpreter. We were talking yesterday, it must not be very easy to interpret someone like Mujica. This has been an amazing experience. This is an experience that we owe to the students. So I would like to give the floor to one of them. Bueno, 
Muchas gracias a todos por venir. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Ambassador López Fabregat, for coming to Oxford. Students, academics, teachers from the Oxford University and from other universities that are here today. Thank you to the Blavatnik School of Government and the Latin American Center for collaborating in so many ways with this event. I would like to thank the Latin American Society, both chairmen and the Oxford Uruguayan Society. Gerardo Cafeira is the chairman and will hand a certificate of honorary member to Senator Mujica. Thank you very much. Bueno, muchas gracias. Guys, I'm happy these things get to me at an older age. If I had received this at your age, I might have believed it. Vanity is very bad, is it? the worst poison. I have to be careful not to fall for it. This is a poem by Atahualpa Yupanqui. Everything is temporary. About the way I speak, I was in prison for many years, in a prison for common prisoners. And since we had the intention of leaving prison, and not precisely through the doors, we had to work politically a lot. And we had to learn a lot about language and about the way we spoke. And the more humble world is, is, is a an interesting world. They're actually the makers of language because uh, language is made in prisons, even if you don't know that. It is like that. Lead, uh, read the book Vida del Buscón, and in Spanish, at least, it is the story of our language. And in a certain world, you need a double, a triple language with certain codes. You listen to tango, you will see there's a certain type of, of, of slang. Amina is a way of referring to a lady or to a woman. And there are many words that came from prisons, from very humble places. And this double language then became poetry and became official. In order to understand this world and to make myself understood, I had to develop this kind of language. And then I liked it and I stayed with it. And I left prison a few times. And we learned things. We learned things with these very humble uh, people. We learned a lot of things. And this is why I kept this, this language, this way of speaking. Language is about memories, is about adventure, is about pain, suffering. It's not inert, it's about building, and it's part of our history, of our personality. It's about the history of peoples. It started with a verb, and it's the word, the most wonderful instrument of human conscience. Don't forget that. We communicate each other with each other with words. So always try to express feelings. Thank you, guys.